Mm. Good glass of wine. Never hurts. It is almost live time. Which is good because I'm really hungry. <laughs> so I'm glad that I'm making us dinner. I wonder how many people are going to make dinner with me tonight. Okay, we are we live. Shall see. Hey everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Mark Sievers. So it is Friday night and welcome to another Together Live. So I have not done one of these in about three weeks, I think, and I'm really excited to be back tonight with you. Um, I know we usually do Saturdays, but I thought let's change it up and do a Friday night. It's an excuse to have an after work glass of wine. So cheers if you're partaking in a little libation with me. Ah, that's good. I am drinking, I am drinking Louis Jadot Chardonnay because tonight on the menu is my avocado and sweet corn cakes with an arugula and parmesan salad. And it just so happens that a Chardonnay is perfect with tonight's menu. So if you are just tuning in, welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, I would love to know uh, who is going to cook along tonight or who maybe has plans to cook this recipe this weekend. And of course, the other Mr. Seavers is here. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so Ryan is going to be our moderator tonight. Uh, if you have questions, please let us know because he is sitting right here. You can't see him, but he's looking right at me. And uh, he is going to um, relay all of your questions and all that good stuff. So we're going to have a lot of fun. So <clears throat> the reason I picked tonight's avocado and sweet corn cakes is they really do kind of embody that essence of summer. They're made with sweet corn from the farmer's market. I, the most favorite thing about the summer for me is corn season. I adore sweet corn. Um, and it is like the base of these delicious avocado and sweet corn cakes. And they're nice and crispy and crunchy and they have tons of flavor and they're really easy to make. And I love kind of this easy summer recipe because you can really put it together in a couple hours beforehand and which I'll show you how we how I do it uh, in advance and then everything just kind of comes together at the end and it just takes like 10-15 minutes to shake your dressing fry up your cakes and dinner's on the table and it's really really delicious and it's a crowd pleaser and I find that children love it as well because they're not spicy um, so let's dive into the corn cakes so it's not very interesting to watch me put everything into a bowl and give it a stir because I know there is many more things that I can teach you. <clears throat> so I know that in the Together Live tab on my website, marksievers.com, there was a make ahead option to, uh, which was to actually make the ingredients or the mixture for the corn cakes ahead of time and then make them into little cakes, panko them, put them in the refrigerator so that they chill. And I'm going to show you all of that just in case you didn't do that ahead of time. But I'm going to share with you some of my like tried and true ways of preparing a couple of the main ingredients in my avocado and sweet corn cakes. So of course, one of them is sweet corn. So you can certainly make this with frozen corn. Maybe you can't make it to a farm stand or a farmer's market. Super sweet corn in the grocery stores. I buy organic. Um, corn, it's, it's picked at the height of the season and then it's flash frozen. So it's pretty good, um, especially in something like this. But I went to my local farmer's market and got sweet corn. So let me show you kind of my way of getting the kernels out because I think a lot of people have different methods. And oh, that sound reminds me of being a kid in the kitchen with my nan. She would peel so much corn for me. And I just love that sound. So a lot of people have different methods of getting the kernels off the cob. And I have to say, I've seen them where you lay down a kitchen towel and you 
put the cord on the kitchen towel and you run your knife down and then you have like all of the that like delicious kind of like milkiness from the corn gets into the tea towel or kitchen towel and then not actually into your recipe and there's so much flavor in that. So what I like to do is take off all of the husk and then cut the little end off so that it has something flat to stand on, a little butt there. And I put it right into the bowl I'm going to mix in. And for instance, and then what I do is just run my knife right down along those kernels. <laughs> and they usually don't get all over the kitchen, but they fall right into the bowl. And when you're doing this at home, you'll see that all of that kind of that sweet corn milk gets into the mixing bowl versus onto your counter or onto the kitchen towel. And I, I love this way of doing this because it does pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time get them into the bowl, not onto your kitchen counter. But, you know, this is easy to pick up a few. Usually they go everywhere and that's not very charming. It's a lot of extra work. In your defense, darling, that's a fairly shallow bowl. It is. You know, thank you for coming to my rescue. <laughs> because usually I do it in this in this metal bowl or a taller glass bowl. But, you know, we're talking about farmer's markets and things. So I wanted to give you, like, the real feel of, like, a beautiful rustic bowl. <laughs> so next is cutting a pepper. So I want this pepper to be about a quarter inch diced. The reason for these particular corn cakes is I'm trying to get the pepper to be roughly the same size as an ear of corn. I don't want big bites of pepper and small bites of corn into those corn cakes. And the corn cakes, when we make them, they're not these big giant six inch round discs. They're fairly small and petite. So I want every bite to have a little bit of sweet red pepper as well. So what I like to do for the red pepper is just cut it kind of in quadrants. So just cut it straight down the center. And what I'm doing, let's get this little stem out of the way. What I'm doing is I'm literally just cutting right around that center part and the seeds. And as you can see, cut off the bottom and then et voila, you're just left with all of that center part that really isn't edible. And then you can make your if some of them have a little bit of membrane like this one, you can just rip it out just like that. You could also cut it out depending on how finicky you are. I'm pretty finicky, so I always remove it. <laughs> and is it fair to say that you could, if you wanted to, save those scraps for a stock? You could. So, well, I mean, there's really no, I wouldn't put the membrane in a stock. Um, but for instance, the corn husk, I have a recipe for summer corn chowder um, coming up. And in that recipe, I actually put the um, um, cob. cob into the soup as it's, as, it's, as it's cooking away because it gets all that flavor and all that starch kind of thickens it up. So that's one way you could use um, this particular leftover. But... The red pepper, you really don't get much but seeds, Ryan. So, so from here, <clears throat> if we wanted julienne peppers, we would just make nice straight cuts just like this. And you've got gorgeous straight-sided cuts. Or we need them about a quarter inch dice. So I just cut them into strips and then cut them into quarter inch dice. This is not the time that you need to pull out a ruler. If they're a little bit larger than a quarter of an inch, nobody's going to know. Um, I'm not over your shoulder in the kitchen measuring. That would be horrible, wouldn't it? Well, you're over my shoulder in the kitchen. <laughs> yes, well, I have to monitor you sometimes. <laughs> especially when you, I don't know, especially when you kind of get into like the, I'm going to make a pasta dish and then, all of a sudden, I'm like, I think your garlic's burning, Ryan. Never done that. Never done that. Never done that. So, anywho, <laughs> this, is, this is my brilliant way of cutting a pepper. 
And of course that gets them roughly to be about a quarter inch dice. And depending on how thick or how wide you make that first cut into strips will of course depend on the dimension of your final product. So there's that. Then there are avocados. We cannot make avocado in sweet corn cakes without avocados. So for this recipe, I, I, actually all of my recipes, I use Haas avocados. Um, when you buy them in the grocery store, sometimes you can find them ripe. Other times they're like really pretty and green. When they're really pretty and green, they're hard as rocks and they're not very good. So you want to let take them home and kind of let them ripen up on the kitchen counter until they become this lovely ugly brown. And <laughs> right. Um, one of the things with this recipe, like so, so if we were going to make my green apple guacamole, which I did make last night, that was delicious. We hadn't had that in a while. Um, I wanted those avocados to be really soft and, and really, really mushy so that, you know, it, it made a great texture for guacamole. This recipe, we don't want them to be so soft. We still want them to have a little bit of give to them. So what I'm doing to cut the avocado and take the pit out or the seed, I'm making my knife, running my knife right around one side, just like that, or around the entire circumference. And then I'm turning it and I'm gonna let my knife go the other way. And what this is, and look at that, see when you do that, it literally just falls apart into quarters. And the seed pops right up. So there's no taking your knife and jamming it at your hand to get that seed out. That never really did make a lot of sense to me. Um, so there's that. <laughs> and then you just take your, I won't do the whole thing, you just basically take off the peel, just run your thumb right underneath and you can see it's nice and bright green inside. And then just like I did the pepper, I'm gonna slice them about a quarter inch thick, rotate it onto its, the flat side and then cut them again about a quarter inch thick and slice them into quarter inch dice. So again, little tips and tricks like this really do make being in the kitchen a lot more pleasurable. And it really does improve your cooking when you're, when you're doing the right method or you're getting the right size for a particular ingredient. It really does change the overall flavor and texture of the finished dish. So I hope you got a little bit of uh, knowledge out of that. Everyone's quiet tonight. Uh, Liz Grant is on and she's oh, with hi, her Liz. sister. Oh, We're that's fun. Together. Sister's night. Mm, that's so sweet, sister's night. Hi, ladies. I think they're the first duo that we know of that we know of so hey hi are we having any libations let me know <laughs> so we've got the vegetables done now what i want to show you is how to make my everyday lemon vinaigrette this vinaigrette sits great into the refrigerator it is so universal and so delicious and it all comes together in a little canning jar. So <clears throat> store-bought dressings, I really, the only store-bought dressing I keep in the fridge is a bottle of chunky blue cheese dressing because sometimes I like to dip potato chips in it. <laughs> I'm telling you all of my secrets. And yet I wonder why I gain weight. I, if anybody has any advice on uh, why I gain weight because I'm eating potato chips and blue cheese dressing, please let Ryan know. Why but me? I think it's a brilliant idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, maybe I should change to my potato chips and curried ketchup. Oh. I do have a recipe for curried ketchup on uh, this channel and on MarkSievers.com. It's incredible. So maybe I should change to that instead. All right. I digress. So large can, kind of large mouth canning jar. I'm putting in a half a cup of olive oil and four teaspoons of honey, which is a tablespoon plus a teaspoon. And notice I'm eyeballing this. I know this vinaigrette like the back of my hand. And some salt and pepper. 
and some Dijon mustard. So not the yellow stuff, not the regular mustard. This is Dijon mustard from, it's French. And it has like this yummy, well-rounded, vinegary, mustardy deliciousness. And it's really the basis of so much, so many vinaigrettes, I should say. And notice I'm just putting it into the jar. Not really, a little bit of extra just for fun. And we need some, for everyday lemon vinaigrette, we need lemons. So lemon and a rasp. So I know we have zested fruit so many times on my Together Live video series of, and all of my other videos on this channel. And I always say to zest right over the dish because when you do this zest at home, as you're zesting the citrus, you'll see all of the essential oils come squirting out. And if you were to do that onto your cutting board, you will get all of those essential oils, which equals flavor, onto your cutting board versus over your jar, your bowl, your plate. So I need about a half a teaspoon of lemon zest. And this is gonna give the dressing a nice fresh lemon flavor. And just eyeball it. I mean, once you kind of, once you zest enough citrus, you'll, you'll get to know how much is what. You can also do it upside down. And I know a lot of people like to do it this way. Ryan, can you give them a little overhead? So I know you can take the lemon and you can zest this way. For some reason, I find that extremely complicated and my brain does not like to do that that way. But as you can see, it's awkward. It's very awkward. It's like when you try to brush your teeth with the opposite hand, it right. just doesn't work. But you can see all of the li lemon zest or lime zest or orange zest or whatever you're zesting gathers right in the top. And that's if that's how you want to learn to measure, that's fantastic. But I think a lot of cooking, you have to rely on your instinct. So, you know, have a little bit of courage and go forth. So then, then I need some lemon juice. So I need about a half a cup of lemon juice. So I just have this little lemon juicer from the grocery store actually. It's funny because this little lime, lemon squeezer comes in green for limes and orange for oranges. Um, turns out a lemon squeezer also fits limes. So you don't need the orange, you don't need the green one, but if you are going to use oranges a lot, the orange one does have a bigger, um, a bigger well. So definitely get that one if you are in the grocery store. But see, I'm just doing it right over the, the jar. And that's it, that's homemade vinaigrette. So I'm gonna put it into, make sure the lid is on nice and tight. And I'm going to shake this for about 60 seconds. And what that does <clears throat> is that mustard, as you're shaking it, starts to emulsify. And I know a lot of people, and 60 seconds is longer than you think. So Ryan, you're going to, you're going to time me. Am I timing you? Yes, on your computer watch. <laughs> it's his Apple watch, but I call it his computer watch. <laughs> So as you shake it, the, that mustard is emulsifying with the olive oil. It's kind of making it all into one and it's making this gorgeous, delicious and really fragrant everyday lemon vinaigrette. This recipe for this vinaigrette is also in my cookbook, French Omelettes, Your New House Meal. Along with many other recipes, of course. But I find I use this on, of course, dressings for arugula salads and other salads, but it's also great drizzled onto uh, roasted vegetables. I know that this would be delicious as a marinade if you ate meat and you ate chicken or some seafood. This would also be delicious um, as just a little, oh, we have a countdown. This Three, would <laughs> two, one. That's oh, 60 seconds. That is the most workout I've done all week. But yes, anyway, so this is delicious dressing. So let's go into the kitchen. Let me gather all of this Stuff. Does anybody remember <laughs> what that is from? This stuff. 
Devil Wars Prada. Um, okay, so <laughs> people are gonna be like, what is he drinking? <laughs> I swear, I'm only on my seventh glass. No, this is my first <laughs> glass of wine. All right, come with me into the kitchen. So, I'm going to now put the vinaigrette into the refrigerator because I wanna, it kind of solidifies a little bit as it gets a little cold. So I'm gonna put that into the refrigerator. Now, we are going to talk about the cakes. So come on back out here. And I made the mixture ahead of time and I do have some cakes that we're gonna to fry together that are already in the fridge. But I wanted to talk to you about the mixture because it gets kinda of messy, but this is the mixture when it's done. So it's been sitting in the fridge for a couple hours and what I love about this is the texture it has. So when you are doing the mixture at home and you start to, and you scoop them and you form them into cakes and you cover them in panko, they're very, very loose, right? So you have to refrigerate them before you fry them or they'll fall apart. So, but I did want to show you how I form my risotto cakes, uh, my, um, Avocado and sweet corn cakes. Sorry, risotto cakes I was testing a couple days ago for September. Risotto, saffron, and butternut squash. They're delicious. So, those well, are coming I, soon. I think we just said our <laughs> next uh, Together Live for September. Oh yeah, do you guys want to do that one for Together Live for September? We should yeah. do the risotto cakes with roasted butternut squash and saffron. They're so, and they have, I think I've landed on Manchego cheese inside of them, mm. I think. I don't know, Ryan, we might have to test them again. Yeah, okay, please. <laughs> he's, he's such a loyal, <laughs> loyal fan. He loves anything I test. Except for that one thing. And that other thing. <laughs> that other thing is I tried to make homemade pho. And Ryan walked through the door. We were living in Seattle. This has got to be nine years ago, ten years ago probably. Living in Seattle, he walked in the door home from work and I was in the kitchen like mad scientist and I guess my nose and kind of senses were accustomed to it but he walked in and he was like oh my god <laughs> my nostrils are on fire and I was like uh oh I think this might be too spicy so yeah the, the he did not like that the apartment basically felt like it had been maced <laughs> <laughs> hey shit happens Oops, nice work <laughs> all right anyway so once you make the mixture, this has been chilling for, like I said, a couple hours, so it's gonna be a little bit easier for me to handle, but what I like to do is take a two and a quarter inch scoop and scoop out the mixture, just like this. I have a parchment lined sheet pan, and you can really make these any size you want. You could make them half this size as a little appetizer, a little dipping sauce if you wanted to. But this recipe serves about, I would say, five people with, with the salad. And they really are just so good. So. Well, you get the picture. That's how you scoop, that's how you scoop the mixture. So now it's all about the forming of the mixture. So what I like to do is Take it just like this, and then I kind of pat it. Oh, I need a fork. I kind of pat it in the mixture just like this with a fork. Get the top, get up around the sides. And when you're when you're breading things, you always want to try your very best to keep one hand clean. Use your clean hand. So I just have a little fork and just like this. And then you just take it and scoop it right back to your parchment lined paper. So as you can see, it, this mixture, even though it's cold, it's still fairly loose because it's in a big mass. When this is kind of the texture, the kind of the texture it will be when you first make it, so they're, 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 they're very loose, like I said, so they, it, it takes a little bit of time, but as they chill, they firm up, and that is what makes them perfect for frying. 
That's, we need those to be a little firmer so that it all kind of fall apart in the pan. So, I think we have some risotto, some risotto cakes, some avocado and sweet corn cake to fry. <laughs> wow, I must be really thinking about those. <laughs> so, let's go into the kitchen, take my glass of wine, and let's fry some cakes. So I did four ahead of time, two for me and two for Ryan. Et voila, just like this. And I put them, covered them with a plastic wrap, and you'll see they're nice and firm. They're much, much more easy to handle. And let's see, I need a dish towel here. Okay, here we go. So I have a large saute pan and I'm gonna set it over medium heat. And I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of safflower oil or sunflower oil or canola oil, but you wanna use some sort of vegetable oil or nothing olive oil. Vegetable oil has a higher burning temperature. And I'm gonna add a few tablespoons of butter because I, got, I want the, the, te the high temperature of the vegetable oil and the flavor of butter. And you'll see when you make these at home, <clears throat> they have beautiful English cheddar inside. And between the creaminess of the avocado and just the mixture itself, but you get pockets of this creamy English cheddar and it's so delicious. It, th these really are kind of like the epitome of summer. So while we let that kind of heat up here, we can also talk about the salad. So we'll let that heat up. So for my salad, here it is actually here. I've got a delicious rind of Parmigiano Reggiano and I have some baby arugula. And I love arugula with this because, and I, particularly baby arugula, because it's nice and tender mm. and it's very peppery. So you have like that sharpness from the vinaigrette and then you have the pepperiness from the arugula and with the sweet corn and the avocados with these cakes, it, they really are, it's just like the perfect combination. So, I'm gonna crank up that heat. So if you're making, when you're doing this at home, if you're making them, if you're making the entire recipe, you will have, you also want to preheat your oven to about 250 degrees so that when you take the first batch out of the pan, you can put them onto a sheet pan, put them into the oven to keep them warm while you cook the other batch because the, these really taste the best when they're nice and warm and crisp. So this is heating away and you can tell that it's getting nice and warm because the oil kind of gets this kind of glisten to it and we don't want to put these in until the oil is nice and not hot not smoking but we definitely want it to be warm if you put the cakes in to the oil if it's not hot enough they'll just kind of sit in the oil and absorb it and we want them to start cooking right away that's you can see, Ryan, give them a little overhead. And now you can see we have some nice bubbles. There we go. I think we are ready. So that's really not a lot of oil in the pan. It's not a thick. No, we're, oil. we're technically <clears throat> we're sauteing them, but we want, we want a little layer of oil in there just so that they get nice and crisp. So we're not deep frying them by any means. And if you have a, this is about a 12 inch saute pan, which easily fits between four and five. If you have a smaller saute pan, just do them in smaller batches. And again, having the oven on will really help to keep those nice and warm. So let me set a timer for about three minutes and let's go get our salad ready. I think that's, I'll show you a little trick that I like to do to serve my salad. Get my dressing. 
I've got my arugula and my cheese. So for this salad, what I let's see, let's put it in. You can hear the cake sizzling away. Let's put the salad. Let's see, Ryan. What should we put it in? Well, you actually have a comment uh, that uh, somebody really likes all of your different bowls. <laughs> thank you. Ryan thinks I'm insane. That is, I, that is from Tamara. Thank you for noticing. I have some crazy weird obsession with collecting bowls. Um, I just, just love them. Um, and they all have different meanings. This was actually my grandmother's. This I found at a flea market. These are from my friend Eric's store, La Tuyalu in Paris. These are actually big cassoulet dishes, but I use them for vegetables. And this is from his store as well, also for cassoulet, but I'm gonna make a salad in it. So what I like to do, especially doing this table side, take your dressing and I'm just gonna pour just a little bit of the dressing in the bottom of my bowl here. Just like that. And a couple handfuls of arugula right on top. And this is the perfect way of kind of getting your salad done just before dinner so that you can toss it table side. And we can let that sit aside. The reason I'm not tossing it right now is I don't want that arugula to get wilted. I want to keep that arugula nice and crisp and fresh and Putting a little bit of dressing in the bottom of the bowl is the perfect way of doing that. And Tamara, since you love my bowl, I'm sorry if I'm off camera. I have to show you this other one that I have that's off camera. <laughs> so again, I really love bowls. This one is probably the largest bowl that I have. And I'm really excited for the fall when we go apple picking because I want to come back and fill it with apples. So. so Lawrence from Rhode Island said that he loves bowls as well, but he's under moratorium from his husband and uh -uh. not allowed to get any more. <gasps> he's impressed with your collection. I would really like to, to meet your husband. No, Ryan, <laughs> do not. Do, do not. No, 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 no. We don't need. We need. Us bowl fiends, we need to stick together. <laughs> <laughs> so I have about 20, 20 seconds left on these. So let's give these a turn and see how we're doing here. These look pretty good, actually. Oh, it looks delicious. They smell good, huh? Yeah. Whoops. Mmm. Yum. There's the timer. So we will... Set another timer here. Whoops. For another, let's do four minutes this time. Perfect. So I want to show you too. See how some of mine, some of these have kind of not browned evenly. That's okay. We you can always turn them over and get them to be nice and crisp again on the other side. But my I live in a very old building from 1926. So my stove is a little, it tilts a little bit. <laughs> so I'm used to that. So let's get some salad tongs. These smell so amazing. Yes, they do. Let's get some salad tongs. We'll get some plates, Ryan. Let's see, let's use some, so let's see. Let's use, oh, how about these anchor plates? How cute are these, you guys? Little Homer Laughlin anchor plates. I love these. So now I'll show you how to, so all I'm gonna do is just give the salad a toss, just like this. You can always add more dressing if it's a little dry, but I find it hard to take dressing off a salad. So I rather air on a little, with a little bit of caution first. And that looks perfect. So we'll do a little side salad. Just like that. Little side salad. Et voila. Just like that. Take this ugly box away. Then we need some Parmesan cheese. And I just use my little vegetable peeler 
and just do some delicious shavings of Parmesan cheese right on top. There's something really satisfying about the feeling of when you do it that way, like the <laughs> way it goes through, the, cuts the, cuts through the cheese. It's mm. delicious. It smells so good. Let's go check our cakes. Cause I can smell them. So that's a little overdone, but you know what? That's okay. That one looks perfect. Dude. Sometimes the breadcrumbs that get uh, released will give a little, oh, that's really warm. And I'd say that looks pretty good. Let's put that aside. And let's go plate our cakes up here. So. Oh, do you hear how crispy that is? This is perfect. Mmm. Look at these. Don't these look delicious, you guys? Oh, I love them. And when you bite into it, they're nice and creamy inside. They're going to be nice and warm throughout. Look at that. Let's get... Uh-oh, I used my fork. <laughs> That's okay. It's just been in panko. Let's have a little taste here. So. Oh yeah. Hot. Oh, you can hear the crunch. <laughs> it's a big bite. <laughs> you can taste the corn. You can taste the avocado. They have cheese and basil and shallots and chives. Oh, my timer. And they really do just taste like summer. And you see, they really come together pretty easy. And I think that's my favorite thing about these is that you have this beautiful, really elegant, you know, dinner or lunch. And it just takes a handful of ingredients from your grocery store, your farmer's market, or I don't know, maybe you have corn growing in your garden. I've seen so many people on Instagram that are growing corn this year. And I live in not a, some, a place that has a backyard, but I love these just for the simplicity of them, but also the chicness. And they're just delicious. So do we have questions? Anyone have questions? Well, Liz said I'm that- I'm just gonna continue eating. Since they're an hour Sorry. ahead, they already made your delicious recipe and they're having dinner with you. Oh, do you like them? I hope you say yes. <laughs> <laughs> but mm. so far, no questions. Liz, what do you think? Mm. And of course, we have a bit of a delay from... So. That's okay. Well, I hope that you had a wonderful time tonight cooking along with me. Even if you just tune in, sit back, pour a glass of wine, and, and enjoy the show, this circus that <laughs> sometimes ensues here. Um, right? I mean, it's that's real life. So I hope you guys had a wonderful evening. Happy, happy Friday. Oh, Ryan has a... Uh, Tamara wants to know, is this your own recipe that you've created? Yes, everything, every recipe in all of my three books every recipe on my website, every recipe across YouTube, everything is all mine. I spend a lot of time test, re, testing recipes and really kind of making things into what I have in my head. So I'm a vegetarian and I have a mushroom allergy. So that right then and there uh, can sometimes be a little challenging. So. These are a classic kind of riff on the idea of maybe what like would be in a crab cake or another kind of maybe a lobster cake. This is just my vegetarian version using avocados and sweet corn. Liz said that of course they were delicious and wants to know if you can freeze them. So great question, Liz. What I would do 
shape them into patties, put them into, don't coat them, put them onto a parchment lined sheet pan, put them into a freezer and flash freeze them about probably, mm, I would say an hour. Actually, let me show you. I'm going to show you one thing. Stay right there, Liz. Oh, obviously you're staying right there. Um, where are those veggie burgers that I just did? Hold on, guys. Mm. They're in the fridge. They're in the fridge, but where are they? Uh, middle shelf. Middle shelf. Here they are. Perfect. Thanks, hon. So that's exactly what I did. I have another recipe coming up next month for salsa and black bean burgers. Ryan, give them a little overhead view. So, and I did exactly that. I have these little deli containers. And what I did was I made my veggie burgers ahead of time, put them onto the sheet pan, flash froze them. When they were completely frozen, I then layered them just like this with a little piece of parchment separating each one right into the container, put the lid on, and I stored, these are freezer proof, and I just store this into the freezer. So you could easily do that with these. Um, just don't coat them in panko before. P bring them into the refrigerator when you're ready to serve them, that maybe that night. Let them come to room, let them come from frozen to cold, and then coat them in panko, and then fry them up, and you should be good to go. Great question, Liz. And I've got, got to show you my little uh, uh, new recipe coming up, too, and kind of a, a great way to store them. So thanks for that, Liz. A plus for you, my number one student. <laughs> I have, I have cakes to eat here. So you were asking if folks are cooking along or, or just tuning in. And so Lauren said that most of his life is tuning in with a glass of wine and watching the action. Like when his husband does yard work. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Brava to you, darling. <laughs> Brava to you. Well, honey, what do you think? I've halfway eaten mine. Are you hungry? I am ready to eat. Would you like some dinner? You betcha. And maybe fill my wine glass. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much again for joining in tonight on another Together Live. Happy Friday. Um, head over to MarkSievers.com for the full written recipe. You can also print it out. And I will see you guys pro in, I think we're going to do another one in two weeks. Uh, or right around the middle of August. I'm not quite sure which one we're going to do yet. But I think it's going to be more of little bit more intricate than uh, than this so stay tuned like this video subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed and currently on marksievers.com all of my cookbooks are on sale uh, there's also a Bastille Day uh, promo code for French omelets so if you do want to check out my cookbook French omelets your new host meal make sure you enter uh, the Bastille Day code it's right at the top of the website on the banner so you get an extra 20% off and until next time I need wine, Ryan needs dinner, you guys have a fabulous Friday. Bye. Well, I'm going to take another bite. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>